Hi guys, it is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about wired to experience trauma. Basically, let me explain what that means. Basically what that means is that there has been some particular trauma somewhere in your family, so intergenerational trauma, or you have experienced trauma yourself. And what happens to the brain is that it actually rewires itself. There's a ton of neurological and neuroscientific pieces of the brain that rewires itself. And so you become wired wired in a way to experience trauma. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more as we go along in today's video. So let's just not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump in. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For all of you who are subscribed and participating, thank you once again. And for those who are new, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our community. It is growing all of the time and I'm so grateful uh, for all of the people that are on the channel. And I'm really happy that most of you are benefiting fitting and that's the goal. In case you don't know who I am, let me go ahead and briefly introduce myself. My name is Tamara and I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist, but I'm also licensed in mental health and I provide within my practice trauma-based mental health services for children, teens, and some adults. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this topic has been something that I've talked about uh, in a variety of ways on my channel since its start. Um, since its start back in 2017, um, I started the channel with the intent of, you know, being a place of community and a, and a place where you can bring your questions and your experiences and get them answered. It's almost like having a therapist on YouTube, you know, but somebody who specializes, not just the general therapist that talks about everything, but a therapist who specializes in particular uh, cases of trauma and so that's been the goal of this channel so you will find some videos on this channel that has a foundation of trauma in almost all of them but on this particular topic which is the neuroscience and the neurology and neurobiology of trauma you will find some videos on this channel and I'll go ahead and here's a couple of them I will post the uh, thumbnail so that you can see them um, and I'll also try to post some things in the description box for you so you know what happens to the brain when you're experiencing a traumatic event or when you have in the past um, and how does it impact you well let's start with the neurobiology of the brain when you have a traumatic experience that has happened to you whether that's a rape or sexual molestation whether that's a parent who has physically and emotionally abused you whether that's a car crash or a terrible tragedy whether that's the death of a loved one unexpectedly a miscarriage a stillborn birth whatever the case may be even race right racial trauma prejudice discrimination repeated institutional discrimination right whatever the trauma may be it's a traumatic experience and it leaves an imprint on the brain an imprint on the brain and I repeat that again because I want you to commit it to mind that you are just not emotionally and and psychologically responding to trauma, right? There is a neurobiological and neuroscientific component to what you're experiencing, right? And so that's why I'm saying it leaves an imprint and that's why I'm repeating it. It's very important to keep in mind. So let's talk about the most important structures of the brain. And then I'm gonna give you a rundown of what actually happens to you when you have become wired to the negative, you know, the negative effects of trauma. So you are emotionally and psychologically wired, I should say, to experience trauma. All right, so let's start with the brain. The first part of the brain, and I always mention this on the channel, that has a lot to do with trauma is the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-sized structure in the brain, and I'll go ahead and post a picture over here so you can see it. It's a little small section in the brain, and it's surrounded by the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the limbic system, and it's right in the middle of the brain, okay? The, the central piece of this particular structure in the brain is emotional memories. This is the part of the brain that's largely impacted by emotional memories associated with food, smell, touch, right? All those sensory experiences. Let's say, for example, you're in public, right? Uh, you walk past somebody who's wearing a specific cologne. It automatically takes your mind all the way back to your own mother. Maybe your mother who has tragically passed away. She died of cancer unexpectedly. You were given so much time. She didn't make it. She died. And you have struggled with the loss of your mother. Well, Basically, what's going to happen when you walk past somebody that's wearing a perfume that your mother wore, it's going to trigger the amygdala. The amygdala is almost primitive 
in the sense that it has no reasoning. It has no logical ability. It has no ability to decipher between cues or triggers. It has no ability to process, right? That is the job of the cortex. The cortex is the, 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 uh, the piece, this, how can I put this guys? It's like the covering of your brain. It's your brain. Okay. That's the cortex. I'll put a copy of it right over here or a picture so you can see it. Um, basically the cortex has a lot to do with our higher order, order thinking and some of our sophisticated brain processes, right? Such as decision-making and you know, processing things and rationalizing. The amygdala does not have that. The amygdala responds immediately, immediately to emotion, to triggers, to cues. It has no ability to decipher between cues or anything. It just responds. And so the amygdala is a piece of the brain that is largely impacted by trauma. That's the part of the brain that, you know, veterans, you know, begin to struggle with when they return from war, right? That's the part of the brain that PTSD uh, tends to trigger the most, right? These emotional memories, okay? The next part of the brain, guys, that's important is something known as the hippocampus. I want you to kind of think about the hippocampus as a center for long-term and short-term memory, all right? That's the part of the brain that really centralizes on memory. It really focuses on laying down those memories in a short-term way or a long-term way. That's the best way to put this without becoming too scientific, you know? The hippocampus in, you know, some research studies on trauma has shown Shown that it is actually smaller in volume in individuals who, who has experienced trauma. And really what that means is that the trauma has taken such a, a neurological impact on the hippocampus that it actually shrinks to a particular size. In these research studies, when the, when the hippocampus is compared to people that do not have trauma, you know, it's very, very, um, you know, recognizable that this part of the brain is shrunk. It shrinks in volume. I'll put some research studies in the description box so you can take a look at this. Uh, but it's an interesting uh, study for sure. So the hippocampus really does shrink in response to trauma. And that actually impacts your ability to think. It actually impacts your short-term and your long-term memory. Another part of the brain that I focus on a lot on this channel is the prefrontal cortex. Now the prefrontal cortex is right here. It's behind the forehead, all right? And basically what happens in the, free, the prefrontal cortex, excuse me, is that you have your decision-making there. Your impulse control is there. Parts of your personality development is there, right? This is a central location for making decisions, for thinking rationally, um, for processing, you know, the black and white aspects of decision making, right? When that particular part of the brain has been impacted by trauma, you may see some personality change. You may also see some impulsivity, right? You're not able to kind of pump the brakes and pause and think things through. And you're definitely going to recognize an inability to make decisions. These are actual neurological changes that the brain goes through. There are also some changes in um, the brainstem, which is the part of the brain that's connected to the, the bony uh, spinal column. So you have a brain and you have a spinal cord that goes down the middle, right? So there's the brain, spinal cord, but that bony structure that goes down the spinal cord right? That's called the brain stem. And that has a lot to do with our automatic processes like breathing and heart rate. And that is largely impacted by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And I talk a lot about that in this video right up here. So go ahead and check that out. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system tends to be largely impacted by trauma. It really is in simple terms, the fight or flight system. And there's a lot that goes on there. Okay, so these are the neurobiological and neurological components of trauma. These are things that you are likely to deal with when you have experienced trauma, psychological, emotional, physical, and even traumatic brain injuries. Whatever the trauma may be, you're likely to experience all of these things. This is why it is important to understand how you become wired to experience trauma. You're not just having an emotional and psychological experience. You're having a neurobiological experience 
as well. Thank you so much for being with me today, guys. In this video, if it was helpful, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Share your experience. Ask me your, your questions. I love reading them. I love answering your questions. I think it helps me kind of stay really sharp, you know, and what I'm offering you and even what I'm offering my clients within the office and those who consult with me. And I think it also provides a community of safety for all of you when we can have a discussion. So thank you for that. Go ahead and post your comments and your questions in the comment box for me and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and that thumbs up button which pushes us up in YouTube and it allows us to continue to grow and it makes this video available to other people. All right guys, I'm so sorry for the long video but wanted to make sure that you had really, really good information. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.